Hey, how are y'all? Um, I'm sorry about the audio for this following video. I'm not sure if it's um, if it's my phone or what exactly was wrong there. Now my van rattles a lot, has makes bad noises, and some of that sometimes can translate into the audio pickup as this big deep rumbling. But I also think my phone itself may have actually um, issues with it with a microphone where there's a little bit of um, I don't know static and gives it a bad sound. I've got to look into that perhaps. Anyway, enjoy the video. Alrighty. So today is April 7th. We are four days late with our weight in update for March. Uh, I don't think it's gonna make any difference. Well, let's take a look at uh, what our numbers look like for today. <sighs> okay. There you go. And now it's on. Take a look at that. Yeah. 350.8, I gained 10.4 pounds. We're gonna be talking about this in a minute. First, I gotta put everything away. Yeah, there you have it. There you have it. Apparently, I've gained 10.4 pounds in the last months. Has carnivore diet failed me? Or have I failed the carnivore diet? kind of all right for me I gained 10.4 pounds you know you guys were all very encouraging when uh, when I only lost half a pound what are you gonna say now yeah, well it's just a setback I know So what did I do? Because honesty, right? Can I trace 10.4 pounds of weight gain back to any kind of change in my diet? Yes, I can. Absolutely, I can. There's one thing I've done right and three thing I have three things I have done wrong. The one thing I've done right was my regular daily meal. It was still, well, I've been eating a pound of ground beef and I've been eating a rotisserie chicken. So that is 100% carnivore. Nothing wrong with that. How are the three things that I've done wrong though? in 
January and February. But fast forward to March, the last months that I took measurements of. Guess what I've been eating? You've got it right, ice cream. And not just a regular ice cream on a popsicle stick or something. Ice cream by the pint. So it's not one serving size, it's probably, I don't know, what's in there? Three serving sizes, four serving sizes? My favorite ice cream these days is uh, Ben & Jerry's, the Chunky Monkey ice cream. Chunky Monkey is, uh, I, it's supposed to be banana flavored ice cream with chocolate chips. And I think there's walnuts in there too. To be honest, I can't take the taste the um, I can't taste much of the what do you call it of the banana. But my taste buds are weird these days too, so don't take that for granted. Anyway, that was the first thing I've done wrong. I've been eating ice cream, and not just once. I have had ice cream probably on at least 14 different occasions which is like every other day it's bad but wait there's more what else did I do wrong I also have been eating late night and yes we know already from December late night eating is no good in particular if you had the proper meal already for lunchtime or dinner whatever before work and after work that's for me right before work is when I have my meal and late night eating is uh, after work just before I go to bed so what did I eat for late night <laughs> well there's very few food options at that time of day sometimes I would get uh, depending on the time if it's already yeah, it's late enough. I would go to 7-Eleven and they have these uh, boneless boneless wings, which is really just like, I don't know, some version of processed white meat with breading and some sauce on it. Um, right, so I would have one of or two of those orders. I may also have uh, a uh, breakfast sandwich, sausage, egg and cheese on a muffin two maybe or a combination of the chicken and the sandwich or I might have uh, they have at 7-eleven uh, burritos uh, beef bean burritos they're like 269 each so it's not that expensive right it's junk food we all know it first few bites are essentially just tortilla it's gross anyway uh, so I've been eating that not just once, but on multiple occasions. As a matter of fact, I had a last night. I had two breakfast sandwiches and one burrito. What else has I been doing? <laughs> there are three things. Yes, I've been doing one more. Guess what? I've been drinking. I have been drinking after work. Sometimes when I have to go to, ba uh, to the bathroom late at night, uh, you know, on my way home or so, uh, I have to use, uh, you know, I go to the gas station. And I always feel guilty for using facilities without buying. So obviously I have to buy when I use it. And the cheapest thing to buy Besides, if I go to 7-Eleven, get those stupid sandwiches. Actually, they have sandwiches set too. Uh, the cheapest thing to buy actually at my local uh, gas station, it has a nice bathroom, it's clean and maintained and stuff, uh, is beer. Yes, it's beer. They have these 24 ounce, they might even actually be 25 ounce, big boy cans. Uh, they were like 179 each. So, comes to like 199 with tax and deposit that's the cheapest thing I can buy there's nothing else I can buy for two dollars so that kind of sucks uh, 
also turns out the brand the particular brand here that is cheap like that I think it's called Big Daddy yeah I know and uh, it's 8% alcohol by volume so I figured because I've done this that when I get three of those which is good amount of drinking right uh, so three of them equals six regular bottles of beer in beer volume and because of the higher alcohol content uh, it equals 10 bottles of beer by alcohol now if I get three of them though they only cost me 597 so if it's 10 bottles by alcohol that equals 60 cents 60 cents a bottle it's cheapest beer you can fucking get for the price or the cheapest amount of alcohol you can get for the price a really good deal uh, I'm not making a plug for that beer right am I not now uh, so I've been doing that too sometimes I've been doing a combination of the two I might get sandwiches and ice cream or I might get beer and ice cream or beer and sandwich right so I've been doing this multiple times and all that is bad all that has led to 10 pounds of weight gain it goes so fast it goes so fast now there is somehow weirdly enough a positive thing in this whole thing and that is I have been working more and in particular working earlier because I'm God I hate to say this I'm more energized now I know some carnivore haters will say it's like yeah you need your sugars you need your carbs it's your energy yeah there's that now I have also pretty much all months long felt like shit physically like shit my digestion is all fucked up uh, stomach cramps a whole nine yards the other day I went to the bathroom five times take a dump five so physically I feel better on the carnivore diet uh, my life is easier to manage on the carnivore diet but mentally somehow I besides besides when I drink the alcohol that I need an entire day to recover well if you have nothing to recover from you don't understand what it feels to feel good and usually like by 8 9 10 o'clock or so that's when I start feeling good again it's also when I start getting an appetite for beer <laughs> Um, but mentally I've been different now I can definitely see more of a brain fog after eating ice cream and I don't have a brain fog right now I might test it out I'm on my, on my way to switch vehicles and uh, then I'm gonna go to a place I'm gonna eat something different today uh, yeah also not kind of waterproof this time actually uh, this was planned already for this week for a long time so I'm just gonna go through with that it's something I haven't eaten in uh, over a year well over a year you'll see in a minute or ten anyway so mentally I've been better in the game I've been working earlier which means I've been making more money and as you know if you listen to any of my other videos uh, I am a little bit financially in a pickle which is 100% based on not working enough right so in order to get myself out of the pickle I need to work more so I make more money and it just turns out March was a good month for me was work or at least it was a less bad months which yes translates into good right because bad is being in a state
status quo and good is moving forward even if it's only small amounts and that is essentially what March has been like for me as a matter of fact even today it's uh, probably like five in the afternoon or so yes I'm gonna get something to eat um, but I'm recording this as we are driving because I I need to I don't want to waste time I'm feeling energized now I need to start moving uh, I can't just set myself up for cooking and eating in my van and uh, making an elaborate video maybe doing whatever right can't do it I don't have the time for that I can't afford to get distracted otherwise I'll start work at 8 that's when the day turns into a shitty day again so I'm trying to start work early so that I can finish the week good now I'm technically still haven't met my goal for just paying bills for today I mean for this week I'm still short on that I think it's like $50 short so by starting early I have a chance of making the extra right so if I make only $50 for today, which is unlikely, I would break even. If I make $150, it means I have $100 extra. If I make $250, it means I have $200 extra. If I make $350, it means I have $300 extra. Right? So this is this is the day where the extra is being defined. So not, not delaying anything and starting as early as I possibly can is really key over here. Uh, that's why I'm doing this. I mean, recording on the road. And I'm not going to be editing today. I'll be editing tomorrow. Now, the week started out like absolute horrible crap. Uh, the very first day I was so late for work, I think I made $29 for the day. Yes, that's how late I was. Real crappy day for me. Um, but it's also, which is <coughs> the week before, I finished really good. I actually made like $500 extra. Which of course results in getting ahead, right? And just like clockwork, I do this every single time. If I have a good week, or sometimes it's just one good day, right? What am I gonna do the next day? I can tell you what I'm doing the next day. I'm getting so lethargic I'm getting so lazy I'm getting distracted by absolutely everything in the world and then start work so late that the next day has to be a crappy day and sometimes this results in the entire week being a crappy week so January I mean damn January and on Monday I only made $29 on February I only made like $220, which is still below what I need as an average, just to break even. So between the two days, I barely made enough money for one day. That's bad, because it means I would have to work so much extra just to catch up with it. Just to catch up and not fall behind, never mind getting ahead, right? So I had a couple of good days this week. and. It may have been also a good week in general. So it's a combination of me starting earlier and actually making more money. But if I started late, I definitely would not have made that extra money. So that's definitely for sure. So this is so this is what I'm dealing with, right? I, I need to make some money. I can't afford being distracted. So what, is, what should I focus on? Should I focus on carnivore? Or should I focus on making money? Because apparently, I can't do both at the same time for some odd reason. Anyway, time to switch vehicles. So. Different vehicle. What is 
So, so what should I do? What should I focus on? Tell me. Should I focus on making money? Should I focus on carnival diet? Should I focus on building a van? What what should I should I focus on YouTube? All of them are important, right? And I think the truth is I need to focus on money. Because let's face it, when uh, when money is good, when money is good, we are overall more happy. There's less stress on our shoulders. Some people will even say maybe that's when you lose more weight because you're not as stressed, not as not as depressed, not as you know, all the negative things. <laughs> when you get I think I need this here. Check cooling level again, huh? Oh, shit. So, should I focus on that? Because clearly, hard, kind of was hard for me. Now, weirdly, here's another one. January, when I did just pork chops, right? January was the last month I've actually cooked for myself. I don't think I've cooked anything in February or March. Not a single meal. There was some time when it was cooler. But also, you know, I've constantly be going through this struggle of getting myself going, getting myself motivated. And the amount of energy it takes for me to, um, to, to, to cook and go somewhere where I can cook and then enjoy my food and, and stuff. I, I just haven't had it, even in March. Now, my meal in March, my main meal, was always still carnival centered. And then the cheating happened later at night. But it's... What should I do, man? Just focus on the money? Forget about carnival? I don't want to forget about it. But I know I need to get somewhere with the money part. Now, for those who are interested, let's, here's a little rundown of um, what the money situation looks like, right? So the main issue we are dealing with is taxes. I have to file my taxes for last year. Uh, which means I need all of the money for my state and federal taxes for last year and I need to file the taxes for the year before that. So I also need all of the money for the state and federal taxes for the year before, which is two years worth of taxes. And we're coming up to the gas station. I'm gonna take a quick break on the video. I gotta get gas before I go to get my food. It's gonna be another 10 minute ride to get the food anyway. So, it's gonna be a second. Getting gas. Seven point three gallons, twenty two fifty. Okay. We've got to gas. So, let's 
get out of this gas station first before we continue. There we are. Excellent. All right. So I've got I got those two things, right? So it's like two payments in state, two payments in federal. But I'm self-employed, right? So this is why why you wonder, like when you when you think like, well, how come you didn't pay taxes? You mean that I paid no taxes at all? Yeah, because I don't get a W two. I'm self-employed. I have to file my own taxes and make technically quarterly estimated payments. So. That means I have to pay taxes for this current year as well, right? Just like everyone else, really. But this means overall that I'm working on getting money for two separate tax years plus the current tax year all at the same time, right? We're talking about three years of taxes at the same moment, right? That's, that adds up being a lot of uh, chunk change, right? So. So, um, so what I've been doing is, um, I've been good this year. I put money to the side every single week, every paycheck, to uh, for my estimated taxes that I have to pay for this year's taxes, right? Um, and the taxes are normally due in April. Uh, so that's for st federal and state. And I found a tax return from three years ago, three years ago, last one I had and uh, I have enough money to make my estimated tax payments for both federal and state for the first quarter. That's good. Um, based on those very same numbers, I also saved additional money and it turns out that I have enough money put on the side between January, February and March to actually pay my state taxes the outstanding state taxes for two years so i have all of that as well so that's good so this kind of makes me feel a little better because now things become a little bit more realistic and more manageable i know i'm current with money on taxes because i have some money and i know i have some money for the outstanding state taxes that's good um, what i don't have yet is federal money so what I'm gonna be doing, and basing this on the last uh, tax return numbers that I found, I will most likely dip into my retirement savings uh, to pay one year of federal taxes. I'm gonna look for anything that is low performing, uh, not really worth it, and uh, just sell all that stuff. And uh, you know, I'm gonna it's gonna take a hit to the to my retirement income on that, but it's, you know, it's, it needs to be done. And that means at that moment, the only thing left is one year of federal taxes outstanding. So if the payment that I'm actually making is for the year that is the longest away, right? Not the, not 23, it would be 22, then I know that's taken care of, right? And then the only thing I have to take care of is the one that's actually current, 23, which I'm supposed to be paying now, uh, which I feel is not that bad. So because I already have some money for estimated taxes to make my first payment, and I have some money for the state, all the money that I'm saving from here on essentially will go to the tax year 2023 in taxes. So. What I'm probably going to be doing is, is try to, what you call that, try to, you know, save as much as I can, obviously, but I'm also going to be using the money that I would, I, I would have to continue to put money on the side for estimated taxes for the second quarter, right? But what I'm going to be doing this time, instead of saving that money, I'm adding that money to the pool of money that I'm saving for the federal taxes. So, and beginning of May, I'm gonna be making my first payment on federal taxes. 
which should be roughly one third of the taxes, uh, right? Then in beginning of June, I would be making the second payment of that. And then in beginning of July, technically when I'm supposed to be paying my quarterly again, that's when I'm making my third and final payment on the state and the federal taxes. So I should technically in just three months, yeah, in just three months, uh, be able to pay off my federal taxes, uh, which would be wonderful. Now, of course, I would be short on my quarterly payment for the second quarter, but that is less of a problem than the outstanding taxes that I've actually filed for. Uh, so I can make a much smaller payment, you know, like they can make a token payment of $50 for state and federal there. I was like, whatever. Um, it's not going to be a big deal, you know, or maybe just focus on state for that one, you know, if I have enough money and, you know, pay that one as estimated and, you know, make a token payment on federal. Uh, that's, but overall, that is less of a problem than the actual current taxes that I need to pay. So that's kind of like my plan. And uh, thinking of that, it's like, oh, this is actually starting to be manageable because I've got current taken care of, I've got state taken care of, I'm using a sledgehammer method on one year federal and, uh, you know, make three easy payments on the last year of federal. Um, now this all actually takes on shape where I can say, oh, it's like I only need to make this much extra in order to get to that goal, which is good. Uh, anyway, so, uh, once the first set of payments is made, and I still have to file my taxes, I don't know the actual damage yet. Uh, once the first set of payments is made, I will most likely feel a whole lot better. Maybe after that, I will be able to focus on carnivore and maybe not. Uh, but until then, I need to focus on making money. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to give up carnivore. But I got to go into the store real quick. I'll talk about that in a minute. So that is what the um, that's what the money situation looks like. Uh, you know, I mean, this, I still have the credit card debt, but that's a smaller problem, right? The taxes are my biggest problem and headache, really. Uh, you know, credit card debt, technically at least, you can carry for a long time. You don't get in trouble with credit card debt. Uh, not the same way, anyway. But yeah, so the taxes, you know, I need to get that up to date. And uh, I think I'm on, I'm on the way there, right? So that's good. And finally, now that the numbers look almost manageable, I'm already feeling a little bit better about it, right? It's like I'm a little bit more positive in my head. It doesn't mean I'm energized, right? There's, there's still no energy in my body. But, uh, you know, things getting warmer me getting that slowly under control because once once my debt's under control my life moves forward again right it's like everything i want and desire and wish for and whatever everything in life has been on hold until this is taken care of this, this has already been going for a year and a half it's a long time it's and it's depressing you know it's that is why people you know kind of that's it's the psychology of it right that's why poor people stay poor it's the depressing aspect of the situation it's not really the situation itself it's it's our emotional state that is connected to it and you know usually we get ourselves into these problems uh, no one forced me it was all my own doing right it's uh you know i can't i can't complain about things that are natural in a, to a large degree So I have to accept certain things, you know? there are certain things you just need to accept. Now that being said, oh, <laughs> I didn't tell you that one yet because I didn't make a video for a while. 
Uh, you you know I had a car repair bill. Yeah, that was only two weeks ago. I my inspection was up, right? So I bought the van last year in March. And of course, when I bought it, I did an inspection so I can get registered because I, the dealer registers a vehicle for me, right? So that means this year, March, my inspection was up. Or with other words, by April 1st, I needed a new inspection so I'm, get, I'm gonna stay current. Uh, so like, on oh, the middle of the month, I went to 20 years, whatever it was. I went to a car repair shop uh, and no, I know I needed an oil change as well, right? It's been a while for an oil change. Uh, as a matter of fact, I never done an oil change. I was told, I think, that they were doing an oil change when I got the car and the inspection. Or maybe I'm fantasizing about the oil change. I'm not even sure. Now I drove only five to 6,000 miles in a year. So one oil change per year should be good. I'm, I'm driving very few miles. Uh, but I went to the shop and, uh, you know, as I said, like, it's like, well, I need oil change, I need inspection. And, uh, you know, that exhaust pipe, every time I drive through a really big puddle, the water splashes up and knocks an exhaust pipe loose. And I said, oh, that's loose again. Uh, you gotta, you know, tuck that in or whatever you do with that. And, uh, you know, they put it on the lift and then they were like, yeah, you're not gonna get an inspection. And I was like, why not? I was like, wow, look at your brakes. Totally shot. Like I had no pads, uh, you know, down to the metal. The metal was bad too. So I had, I had to get replaced all of my brakes. How, how they passed that car, that van, when I bought it, I've got no idea. There was essentially no brakes on that fucking thing. Uh, and so they had to do all of that. Then apparently I had, uh, what do you call that? Uh, power steering coolant was low. Uh, so that needed to be topped off. Uh, I'm not sure if there was a leak. I think that there may have been a leak or so. I'm sure there was something else leaking out. Um, and I just asked him, it was like, do what has to be done so I can get an inspection. And he did. $1,440. I was thinking $200 for the day. $1,440. Oh, not happy. I was not happy. Right? So that put another new dent into my credit card, right? Definitely not happy about that. So I had that as well. But I guess lucky because I before I started saving for for my tax situation, I focused, it was like in December, I focused on, you know, making like a $2,000 into my credit card first. So I have a little bit of financial leeway on my credit card. And I was lucky I did because I just almost used it all. So that still sucks. And these things happen, right? This is not even a work vehicle. I mean, I don't, I'm not responsible for work vehicle uh, things, uh, leasing company is, but still, 1440. That's not money I wanted to spend on a, on a repair for the van. Uh, there's still a little something that needs to be done. Um, I'll have to take it back there again one day, I don't know, when I, when, after I make my first tax payment maybe, when I feel a little more confident. So we can talk about whatever else needs to be done. But on the bright side, I do have brand new brakes now. Right? So I don't have to worry about that part. <coughs> that's that's at least a good start. But yeah, so that's that's kind of like what, what March has looked like for me, right? It's uh, been cheating on multiple levels. I had extra expenses. But I also figured out I do have um, I'm close to actually being able to pull my financial situation out of the shadow so that's a good thing there right but the good thing happened amongst all these bad things which makes me wonder what should I focus on should I focus on that one good thing which is really critical early 
and just do it to the detriment of all those bad things, right? Can I put my house on hold for a while to deal with my finances? I mean, I guess I can. I don't want to. I want to lose weight because I've got, you know, because once my finances are under control and I start moving forward, I, at that moment, I wish I would have lost some weight. <laughs> right? That's when that part's going to bite me in the rear again. Uh, well, this is just what's going to look like. It's like, wow, this guy couldn't drive any slower than this. If you're driving 15 miles an hour, you fucking retard. So tell me, what should I do? What, what should I focus on? Should I focus on money? Sounding like a greedy bastard or something? Or should I focus on losing weight? I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to gain weight, right? I mean, at a minimum, at a minimum, I want to stay stable, right? What should I do? You know, it's, anyway, I'm almost at the food spot. I'll, I'll show you what I get uh, when I have it. I'm not going to take you inside. I hate taking the camera into stores and restaurants and stuff. It's just so not me. It's like, it's such a... I don't know. I'm, I'm not there yet with my YouTube thingy. Oh, where's this guy? Oh, he's got an, oh, he's got, he, of course, he's got to park exactly where I want to park, he's a fucking bastard. Oh, you piece of shit. I hate people. Anyway, let's get the food. Alrighty. I got the food. I got the food. And yes, we are driving again because um, um, I've got to get to a place where I have the option to go to the bathroom without much problemo. And the reason for that is quite simple as well. I've been having a lot of gas today, which is weird because the day started out without gas. I was kind of constipated when I started out, went to, the, went to McDonald's, take a dump, and it was really not easy to get that out. I, but ever since I've been having gas. So, oh, speaking of it. So, you know, I've been eating a lot of ice cream, right? And one thing that happened, it's, it's good now, but uh, it just kind of like got good now over the last few days, really. Um, I've been having not stomach pain, but it's pain on my left side, low, um, which I believe I had it before, is like an air bubble that is stuck, that can't get out can make it through a turn or something uh, clearly because I haven't really been eating just good clean carnival I've been eating carbs and stuff uh, there's not enough lubrication so I guess increasing my fat content would have helped move things along perhaps but it was really painful for a few days and uh, that's better now uh, I kind of bring the course of that down to the ice cream because I'm also semi lactose intolerant right so when I eat ice cream or drink milk or something sometimes even cheese I get a lot of rumbling going on in my stomach and that rumbling sometimes continues down as the food moves through the system and that can definitely be uh, a little something having caused a little more gas on one side uh, that then got stuck but like i said it's better now so 
I, you know, eventually I stop eating ice cream. At least for a few days, and then now it's better. Um, however, because today is a cheat day, right? Today was supposed to be a cheat day. So after everything I've done over the last months, which was bad, today is still a cheat day, which you can see on the food I'll be eating and on the fact that I'm having a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Yes, a whole pint for like nine dollars. I mean, eating crap is expensive, right? Nine dollars. Remember when I was eating my pork chops? I paid six to seven dollars for the entire meal for the day, and now one cheat item alone is nine dollars. It's you know, when people talk about food being expensive, food's not expensive, garbage is expensive. And you pay for it three times. First by having to work extra to have that extra money. Then by spending unreasonable amounts of money for that garbage food. And then by having to do extraordinary work and other things to, to fix everything that you have broken. It's stupid, right? It's like, it's, it's like three times you're paying for that. First you're giving up time. To make some money, then you're destroying your health for low quality, low nutrient dense foods, and then you have to deal with the health repercussions. So, which also costs money again, which also is, of course, time. Yeah, stupid dog. This guy, which is stupid dog. I'm an idiot. Get that up. But yeah, so that's uh, that's the stories for today, man. But uh, I'm still gonna show you the food I'm having here. Uh, but once I do, it's gonna be coming to an end. So yeah, so oh, yeah, with that food, yeah, I want to make sure I'm at a, at a bathroom location. So if I need to go, it probably is gonna come quickly. So I don't have the time and liberty to drive around and find one. So I want to be there already. Uh, which is another one of those things, kind of all right. Why do I actually like carnival? Because my body reacts really weird to a lot of different foods. Constantly jumps back between, like if I'm not on carnival, constantly jumps back between constipation and diarrhea. Uh, I was never, like, like eight years ago, seven years ago when I lived in my car, there was never a guarantee that I was gonna be you know, like sleeping through the night or something. Uh, you know, many times I would have one meal just before bed and like clockwork almost two to three hours later, I got cramps and uh, I had to get up again and, and hopefully I had enough time. Uh, and then I had a selection of uh, different places where I could potentially go to the bathroom. But sometimes I would be closed. Sometimes there's someone in there. Sometimes they're out of order. Uh, and it was really challenging for a long time. Now that I'm in the van, it's technically slightly easier. Oh shit, I'm in the wrong lane. God. It's gonna get for talking too much. I'm technically have it slightly easier because I have a bucket. Got a Home Depot bucket, I've got a garbage bag, I got paper towels and I got rubber gloves. So all those three things together allow me to, you know, wake up, get on the bucket, take a dump, fold the bag over, get back into bed uh, without leaving really the comfort and security and uh, creating too much of, of the van and creating too much of a disruption to my sleep. Uh, I don't like doing it. Um, but it works. I just did it the other day because I had to. And um, so you gotta get rid of the garbage bag actually. What? Now you're living in your van with a bag full of actual human shit? Yeah, I am. <sighs> I'll probably do that tomorrow. I say probably because I don't actually know. Okay, how far do I want to go over here? Not too far. See, when I eat, I want to have my privacy, right? So I don't want people watching me. And there's this truck over here. 
taking up the entire side. Oh, he's probably sleeping in his truck too. Oh, he's most definitely sleeping in his truck. Can I get a shady spot? There's no shady spot. Maybe next to this van over here. And it's semi shady, but that shade is gonna go away. So, so let's take a look at the goodies that I got myself. Maybe I should start by telling you where I went. I went to a Jamaican restaurant. This thing is called Tropical Drift. And I got two things. I got this one. this one which one do you want to see first small or big actually before leave in the comments guess what did i get what is uh, what is jamaican places having they're having jerk chicken jerk pork they're having curry chicken curry pork they're having roti they're having uh i guess soup pasta rasta pasta um what did i get what do you think i know i got two things so probably got two things right all right now that you had time to to guess this is what i got plato number one plato num number uno look at that i probably should not have gotten anything else this is a medium sized which is the largest that they make with this jerk pork this whole thing is pork looking at it now it's way more food than i had anticipated i always used to get a small one i guess Good job. You have to eat it while it's hot. When it cools off, it's very dry. I'll eat that first. You know I love pork. This is the second thing I got. And what is this? This is a plate of curry goat. Asked him for just one spoon of rice. It's a really big spoon that he put on there. I guess he uh, still felt the need to actually fill it up. So there's a little bit of rice. The meat is mostly separated. So I don't actually have to eat the rice. I might have a spoon of it. Um, so I was getting this one uh, especially asking for just one spoon of rice. Uh, I consider this to be the cheat meal. Um, I don't think there's sugars in the curry, but um, I love curry goat. Oh my God. I can eat that every day. So yeah, those are the two things that I got myself and that I'm gonna be devouring now. And if one of them is um, talking to my stomach or digestive system and makes a suggestion that I should seek out a restroom real quick, then I would be able to do so because right in front of me I'm having a target. And to my side I'm having a Home Depot. Now. I haven't been to either one of those two places in quite some time. I noticed a different Home Depot now has... Uh, you need to someone to open the door for you. It's going with the times, right? Too many homeless people. I know it's people shooting up in there and doing, doing uh, taking a shower and whatever. Oh, 
Je joue quoi Je joue quoi oh. How much did I spend Way too much. Each one of these two meals cost twenty dollars. Oh, I'm eating forty dollars worth of food today. That is expensive, even for me. I could be eating, um, what is it, steak and lobster for forty dollars and get served in a restaurant. But I love both, so. Here we are. Anyway, um, that's the update. Um, nothing else to say, I think. Nothing else to add. Uh, I hope you're not too disappointed. Uh, the show must go on, man. The show must go on. And I gotta focus on one thing at a time because that's all I'm able to do. So you all have a nice day, have a nice Sunday, and have a nice solar eclipse. Uh, or I hope you enjoyed the solar clips if you see the video afterwards or whatever whenever I post it uh, Yeah, peace out. Have fun. See you next time